Welcome back guys. In this video, I'm going to talk about two tools which you should know about, which are Cordova and Capacitor. Now these two tools, basically we discussed about them a bit in the initial videos, but I just want to take out a moment and discuss them in depth. So what happens with Ionic, what the thing is, is that whatever you do, Ionic at the end of the day is running inside a web view, right? Whatever you're doing, whatever you're creating, like awesome widgets and everything, you know, all these awesome things and everything, none of this is actually truly native. Your user is always interacting with a web view, with the HTML, with the CSS and with the JavaScript. So how is it different? How Ionic is different um, than just hacking around a web view tag on HTML and, you know, just, just hacking around a web view similar web view on ios how is it different well ionic is a framework right and a framework's responsibility is to provide a complete solution not just you know just throwing you off with some certain bunch of scripts so what ionic does is that ionic actually provides you with something known as a interlinking between the native world and the html css javascript world so you're writing for the browser right but you are able to access native functionalities as well. Why, what do I mean by native functionalities? Well, that includes like camera, for example, like GPS on the, on the mobile devices, right? Like accessing the file system. So JavaScript on the browser cannot access file system, but you can do that when you're developing applications with Ionic. Now, how is that made possible? You see that what Ionic does is whenever it has to make some native calls, some native thing has to be done. For example, you know, just getting access of camera or just getting access of location or accessing files. It calls this big brother of his, that is Apache Cordova or recently Capacitor. Now, what is the difference between Cordova and Capacitor? I would say not really much. Capacitor is there for a couple of years. It's uh, it's relatively new. But the thing is, Capacitor is built by the Ionic team, right? So Capacitor is an in-house creation of Ionic team. Cordova, on the other hand, is not restricted to Ionic itself. So Cordova was used by Ionic, you can see right here, but it's not really created by Ionic in uh, with the Ionic's demands in mind. So it's more of a generic thing of writing, you know, web-based applications and letting them interact with the native stuff. So at the end of the day, you're going to see that both of these things get the work done. But because Ionic officially supports and encourages the use of Capacitor, we're going to make use of Capacitor in this whole series all along for adding native functionalities. Now, one of the native functionalities which we want to discuss is adding the Firebase. Now, what happens with Firebase is that we actually need to access those uh, those native things like the native Google login box on Android. Um, you know, just having a native Facebook login experience from the Facebook installed app if it is available, stuff like that. So you cannot really do that by sitting in a web view. You need external native help. So, so yeah, that's basically it for this video and I'll see you then in the next one real soon.